Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another update video. Just this morning, uh, we actually received a very large content poll. It's the first one of 2022. We actually haven't had one of these in quite a while. Now, in it, there is a plethora of different game changes, including uh, a pretty significant change to clue scrolls. Uh, small redesigns of armor, quality of life changes, items being moved to free to play. There's just a lot of stuff in this poll, so I thought it would actually be worthwhile to make an entire video on it where I'll highlight and discuss all of the changes that probably are going to be coming sometime in the next couple of months. Anyway, as always, don't forget to uh, like the video. Thanks again, and let's get started. So here we are finally with the 76th game improvement blog. First one of this year, and we're starting off with a significant change to clue scrolls and specifically to elite clue scrolls. Now there's been a underlying issue, I would almost go as far to say as bug or unintended change with elite clue scrolls. They're very slow to do and their rewards kind of suck. Part of that actually has to do with the odds of getting a rare item or a mega rare item. Now quite a long time ago when Jagex added in gilded armors to the drop tables for clue scrolls, they didn't actually adjust the rate for third age to compensate and third age pieces were actually made rarer because of the additional items and that makes it actually really awkward because elite clues actually have a lower chance of rolling third age than hard clues do which obviously that shouldn't be the case. The odds of getting a piece of third age from an elite is 1 out of 5,700 and the odds of getting a piece of elite from a hard clue is 1 out of 3,200, so much more common. And while that's not the only issue with elites, that definitely is exacerbating the issue. Nearly twice as rare as a hard clue, which is way easier to complete. Why would you do that? So they're going to be adjusting this and they're going to fit in elites now to be at a rate of around 1 out of 2,750. And so they're slotted in between hards and masters, which does make a lot more sense. And if this does end up passing, this will actually affect new and existing caskets, which means if you have a bunch of elites banked, you will be able to take advantage of the new drop rate. Now that's not actually the only clue scroll change. They're actually looking to add in clue drops to the Hallowed Sepulchre. Now this wouldn't be the meta way to clue hunt, but you would have a decent chance of getting them from the Hallowed Coffins. So the type of clues will actually be distributed throughout the floor. Uh, so on the first floor you could get easy clues, uh, the second and third floor would produce medium clues, uh, the fourth floor would give you hard clues, and the final floor and grand coffin would produce elite clues at a fairly decent rate. For example, the grand coffin has a rate of 1 out of 15 to get an elite clue, which is very common. Not to mention that the Hallowed Sepulcher already has a lot of other reasons to do it anyway. Even though they say this isn't going to be the meta for clue hunting, I'd say it's probably up there because you can train agility at the same time and make significant money. Now, ever since the next release, the newest best in slot armor has been Torva, but it's been fairly divided on if the armor looks good or not. Considering it is going to be best in slot armor, everyone will strive to obtain it and wear it, but a lot of people aren't happy with the way it looks, so they're taking another stab at redesigning it, uh, with the new simplified version on the left and the original on the right. Now, personally, I think there are parts of both of these I like more. Obviously this is super subjective and it's going to be hard to get a design that everyone likes, but I'm not really sure if this is it either. It's possible the entire armor might just need a full redesign or just leave it the way it is, I guess. Alright, so next up here we're talking a bit about pets and more specifically pet insurance. Now right now the way it works in game is if you get a pet and don't insure it, you will lose it forever. So that can come from human error, like dying with a pet before insuring it, but also other ways this can happen is if you have a pet equipped already and your inventory is full and there's no way for the game to prioritize giving you the pet, there's nowhere for it to go and it just, you won't get it. I believe it will still show in your collection log, but you just won't have it. So that's kind of another way that people lose their pets, which is really unfortunate and it can lead to people being very apprehensive about bringing pets places because, well, it's easy to lose one or lose a potential future pet. Now they're looking to make a change that would automatically ensure any pet that you get, so while you'd still have to pay to get it back, you wouldn't really ever have a risk of never having it again. As essentially, once you've unlocked a pet, it will always be reclaimable from Probita. 
Now what's also really cool here is that they can actually make a change to introduce a system where if you have the pet in your collection log, but you've lost it either due to dying or due to another weird interaction, you'd be able to reclaim it after this update. So if you got a pet and lost it, you could get it back. Obviously you'd have to pay the fee, but personally I totally agree with this. Pets are so rare, there's really no reason that you should have to lose them. They don't do anything, they're just a cool cosmetic thing that's bound to your character. And I think with these changes, people would bring their pets to a lot more places. And finally here, if you have already shelled out a lot of money for insurance, you'll actually get that retroactively refunded into a coffer that you could use for future pets. So overall, I think some really nice quality of life changes for pet insurance. Now, combat achievements have been out for about half a year now, or maybe even longer, I don't know. Now, a very common sore point it really comes down to the kill count tasks. These ones don't really prove your combat prowess, they're just kind of a time sink. You just need to kill a boss a significant amount of times, which can be pretty time consuming. Now, they would like to tackle this issue by reducing the quantity of tasks across the board. But pretty much every kill count task is looking to be reduced. They don't have the exact numbers for all of them right now. But for some of the more egregious examples, they're looking to reduce the Chambers of Zarek Grandmaster kill count task from 250 kill count to 50 kill count. It would be nice if they had a full list of all the numerical changes, but I guess this is an example of they're looking to significantly shorten those grinds. Now next up here, we have a really interesting item that Jagex is looking to add here. Now they're looking at a new item called Poison Dynamite. This would be created with one dynamite and three nightshade. Now what you could do with this is you could place it on the ground and light it similar to a fire. And after five cycles, the poison dynamite will explode. It'll deal up to four damage and will have a 25% chance of poisoning the target it damages. So why are they adding this in? Well, a while ago they fixed the bug that was allowing some players to kill NPCs without gaining experience. So specifically players with 10 hit points were attempting to get high level slayer and other stuff like that. So they're adding this item in to allow players to continue those grinds without relying on a bug or just an exploit in the game. So there could be some random people running around killing monsters with dynamite and poisoning them. It's, it's a little odd to me adding in a very specific new mechanic that we've never seen before for such a niche use. It'd be fun to actually have a reason to use it on a more conventional account, but uh, what do you think of the solution? Now somewhat recently, Jagex has started working on adding in more clarity to the in-game hit splats. Now they've done things such as adding in different colors for different damage types, adding in a specific color shade for your own personal hit, and a few other things like that. Now adding on to that, they would actually like to add in a specific indicator for when you've hit your maximum hit. So in this example here, this person is rocking the giant mole, and you can see that when they've hit their max, it's brighter and has kind of a highlight around it as well. Uh, which would just be a really satisfying way to know that you hit the highest possible that you can, which is really an awesome change in my opinion. Okay, so next up here, there is a section for a few item changes. Now this is for existing items. Uh, starting off here, we have a change to the V-Shield. Now the V-Shield is an upgrade to the Mirror Shield, but currently it's a bit underwhelming. So they're going to make a few stat changes to it. First up here, they're going to get rid of the negative offensive bonuses for ranged and magic. And they're going to increase the magic defense to match the Mirror Shield. So this will be pretty useful when you're doing a Basilisk task. Now the Bria Fida Staff is an interesting item. It's pretty rare to obtain from Bria Fida, as the boss is gated by keys, which take a while to obtain. So the staff is somewhat expensive, but not particularly impactful in membership anyway. So a popular request is actually to make the Bria Fida staff and the Bria Fida essence free to play. They have pulled this in the past already and they're going to re-pull it to see if people have changed their mind. Uh, so next up here there are a few changes to the clan hall. Now one of the biggest changes in my opinion is a clan party room chest and a lever which means you could do a drop party just for your clan in the clan hall. That is pretty huge for clans you want to do a drop party but not get sniped by randos who just happen to be there. They are also looking to add in a combat ring, similar to a house. And there are a few other minor changes to the clan hall, such as allowing you to interact with a cat and being able to play more keys than the piano. Now there's also a poll question that is looking at the draw distance for the Steam Client and I guess Runelight eventually. Now, in the Inferno, you're actually allowed to see NPCs beyond the normal draw distance, while the Fight Cave doesn't have that. 
They like to ask whether or not the fight cave should mirror the inferno and have increased draw distance so you can see where projectiles are coming from and not be as surprised. Now at the bottom of the pole blog there are quite a few smaller changes such as adding a fishing net spawn to the fishing guild. I mean, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> More items in the fishing guild store. Some quality of life changes that are kind of nice, such as when you're smithing items, you can now hit this space bar to automatically do the last smithing action, which is pretty nice because right now you have to kind of click at a very specific point on your screen. Often people use screen markers, so this would help out quite a bit. And it also maybe do the same thing for the jewelry crafting interface. And other smaller changes such as making the Pharaoh Scepter one-handed. They're also looking to add in and sold head drops for Cerberus and Hellhounds. The Hellhound head would be able to be reanimated for a thousand prayer experience and would actually count towards your Hellhound task when you are reanimating them. Now next appear they're looking to make giant keys and bossy keys stackable. So those who are extremely high level and want to kill a ton of Briafita or Obor in a row could bring a large amount of keys with them. Now when you're crafting regular runes, there's actually a delay between when you click on the rune crafting altar and when it crafts the runes. Now that's not present for combination runes, so they're looking to maybe just get rid of that delay altogether. So that would increase the experience per hour of conventional rune crafting, but nobody really does that for experience anyway. So it wouldn't really increase the top end at all, just the lesser used training methods. And finally here at the very bottom, there are a few changes to Soul Wars or specifically the Soul War Island. They'd like to add in a new fairy ring, which thank God this island is so big. This will make it a lot easier to get to the, the Isle of Souls cave, which does have access to, I think, a rune rock, uh, which, you know, that is a consideration. And finally here after all this, they're going to be increasing the experience you receive from zeal tokens to reflect what was originally pulled at around 80,000 experience per hour. Right now it's closer to 60,000. And that's it, a gigantic poll, a ton of changes to a wide variety of content. Happy to see another one of these. And there's some pretty important changes in here, I would say, nothing too game changing, but a lot of nice small things I think will improve the game in the long run. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time. Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to The Hybrid, Alejandra, Suzwani's Flail, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed to the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Also, a big thank you to Cadell Studio Gaming, Locustiz, Mexos, Base Titch, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for also being subscribed at the Runite Tier. Appreciate it a lot. As always, if you're looking for another way to support the channel, Becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You will become immortalized in all of my future videos, get a custom role in my Discord server, and access to my video release schedule. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.